morning, everybody. Welcome to Gloria Day. I'm Pastor Monty Minor. We're really glad to have you here this morning. We got a great service today. It's pretty important. We're going to be talking about how do you deal with people who are hostile to Christian values and might challenge your beliefs. We're going to talk all about that today and try to give you some really helpful tips. We're so glad you come. What came with us? I hope that you can come to a, with us in person, especially now with all the stuff that's going on. It's important to build that community of like-minded believers, but we're glad that you're here with us this morning. Good morning to my wife, Nadine, who is watching down in the cities and her, uh, her sister and brother-in-law too. So it's good to have you here. Please uh, get your cup of coffee or some hot chocolate. Join us for worship. Thanks for coming today. God go with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad that, that you're here this morning. I, I put this tip on, on uh, Facebook, and I think I need to tell everybody this as well, is that now we, we're getting so many people that come to church now that I'm going to need you to do two things. Number one, you didn't follow my directions, man. All right. <clears throat> I want everybody to move up, not now, but... Eventually, move up two spaces, two pews if you can. No, don't have to do it now. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just giving you trouble. But you got to think of what it's like when a visitor comes. A lot of, and they also with our parking, if you're able-bodied and one of our regular members, and if you can park down in the back so that we can make sure. Because there's two things. A lot of times visitors don't know what time the church starts or can't find it. And so they're having a hard time finding a place to park and they come in late. I don't want to have them to, to, to climb up all the way up to the front and pray up to the front. So if we can special, this side works, you guys are good. I like you very much. I like you too. I like you too. <laughs> I like you too. But I need everybody to go up two next week if you can. Just so that we can let some people come in so we don't have to, to uh, bring them out here. Uh-oh. Um, what else do we have? We have to do? Oh, we're not having communion today because I have to go... And the organist and I have to go to preach at Breezy Point, lead worship at Breezy Point. We have a summer service out in Breezy Point at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to be getting done quick here. And I won't be able to greet you. I hope I was, it was enough that I greeted you beforehand. We're so happy to have you here. If you want to help with stuff, we're doing a lot of repair work and remodeling at church here. Easy stuff like painting and we're going to be putting up uh, retaining walls out here. If you'd like to help with that, there is a sign-up sheet on that table out in the lobby there, and you could help us out. Um, you don't have to, you're not going to be a part of an organization that you're there for four years. This is just kind of, if you can volunteer and help us, that would be great. Also, New Member Sunday is going to be July 17th, and we're going to be taking in about a dozen new members or so, and, and uh, so it's pretty exciting, that. so just remember that day. Also, um, Oh, gosh, we have another thing I have to remind, I just remind myself of. There's a wedding here right after church. Rita and John are getting married after church today. Woohoo! Yeah! So awesome, awesome. Is there any other birthday? So this is your first anniversary. All right. Anybody else have an anniversary or birthday they want to celebrate this morning? You do, Jeff? What is it? You're only 50 years old? You've got a corn that's 50 years old. Oh. 50 years married? Congratulations. I knew you were older than that. <laughs> awesome. I know it. Well, that, yeah, you got married when you were 12 or something. <laughs> Anybody else had a birthday or anniversary? Okay, why don't we stand up, turn to our name, let's give everybody a really good welcome and we'll get going. <laughs>
Holy and gracious God, I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all sins. I have lived as if God did not matter, and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have followed. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I am hurt, and those whom I have failed to tell. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all this, and ask for God's grace. I want to do better. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Hear these words of forgiveness. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, by the mouth of face and name. You have established strength because of your foes, to still the enemy in your territory. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars, which you have set in What is man that you are mindful of him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, 
forever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The New Testament reading for today is taken from Acts. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices, and my body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of John. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I'm not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. I'm not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abram died and so did the prophets, yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. and He saw it and was glad. You're not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
but that is the promise of Christ the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the small children to come up for a little message, if they would. Come on up. Come on, be brave. I am. Come on up, Charlie. Good. Come on up, boys. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's good. All right. Good deal. All right. So I want to ask you guys a question here. Have you ever been picked on by somebody? Has somebody ever been mean to you? Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all when people are mean to you. What do you normally do when someone is mean to you? Yeah. You tell them, maybe you should go tell your parents to say, you know what? I don't know how to handle this. They're being mean to me. And then the other thing, I, here's what I'm going to tell you what you can do. You can pray for them. You know, I mean, we talk to God and we ask God, Lord, I'm asking you to help those, that bully to be nicer to me. Do you know who, who this guy is on the cross here? Jesus. Jesus was killed by bullies. People who didn't like him. But he, when he died on the cross, he also rose from the dead. He is, our, he is our God. He loves us and he forgives us. And what we can do is when we have people who bully us, we can pray to Jesus to ask, uh, ask him to help us get through this and to help change their hearts. And maybe when you ask your mom and dad for help, you can say, can we pray for them so that they won't bully us anymore, that they might know that Jesus is their Savior. How about that? Can you guys do that for me? All right. Listen to the sermon today as we talk about people who might be bullying us for what we believe. Will you do that for me? All right. Why don't you go back and we're going to go sing our hymn. <laughs>
Spirit. Amen. The text for today's message is taken from our gospel, which we just heard. Do you know that this, what was it, last week, five players from the Florida Marlins did not want to wear a pride patch on their shoulder of their uniform, and they were publicly chastised for what they believed, um, not only on Twitter, but all over the, all over the media, because they didn't want to wear a pride patch. Um, and the Supreme Court justice this week was, uh, they had an attempted assassination on him because, uh, supposedly, we don't even know yet, but he was going to vote to change the abortion uh, laws. They wanted him dead. Kids in school now are asked for what their personal pronoun is. How do you identify kids in school? You know, all this stuff that's going on, I saw this happening 15 years ago when I was a campus pastor. It, it, I can't say that it's hard oppression, but it's soft oppression. If you don't agree with these things, then you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe, you're whatever. It keeps us quiet. You probably have to sit through endless meetings through your HR department about how you need to believe or what you need to, how you need to, to, to understand different people. For a long time, we've been silent. But it's not like we can take any more steps back. Sometime we're going to have to take a stand. Now, as I say this, I'm going to give you a caveat. I'm coming at this question about how do you deal with people who are hostile to the Christian faith. I'm dealing with this as a person who has a very much more traditional conservative Christian ethic, okay? Now, if you don't feel this way, please don't shut me out, okay? Because this is a topic that we can talk about, gee, I, could, I would be more than willing to have them call me and, and we'll talk about this and, and share your views. I want you to know that if you don't share my, this views here, you're still certainly welcome here because the fact of the matter is, is that... W- we go through life as good as we can. We try to honor God as good as we can and, 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 and give Him glory because of what He has done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. So if you have different beliefs on this, I get it. But hang in there because someday the same people who are going after me will be going after you because you hold to the faith that Jesus is your Savior and Lord. It's going to come sooner or later to a degree So we might as well all talk about this. Jesus today, flip the page. Jesus today, (laughs) he was getting picked on. They were going to kill him. They picked up stones. You know why? Because he said he was God. Now, the people, flip the page. There you go. Not that guy. Can you turn the page, please? Add a girl. There we go. Very good. Okay. Did I put you to sleep already back there, you guys? I'm sorry. I'm going to know. I'm just teasing. All right. That's all right. I'm just teasing you. So Jesus today in our gospel, he was getting th- uh, threatened with death because he said he was God. And now the people he was talking to that were people that were kind of interested in him, They were pretty much interested in what he was saying because they were listening to him. But he said all these things. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I mean, he declared himself to be God. And they wanted to kill him because that's not what they believed. Oh, they believed that Jesus was something because they were following him. They believed that he was something, and they kind of liked that idea but it, I, I, their faith was akin to like the Doobie Brothers, okay? 
You guys know the Doobie Brothers? They sang a song, Jesus is just all right with me. Well, he may be all right, but is that the same thing we're talking about here? We believe that he's the Son of God. And I think that these people were like that. They kind of liked him. They liked the idea that he was Messiah. But when he started saying that he was God, God's Son, they started to freak out a little bit. And this is how they were going to deal with him. They were going to kill him. They were going to stone him. How do we deal with people who maybe, who just don't like what we believe? Uh, whether it's our Christian beliefs or, or that may we believe that, that marriage is for a man and a woman or that there's male and female or any number of issues that are really critical to this is, this is what we believe, what God has taught us in his word. How do we deal with that? The first thing is right here is really important. Number one, flip the page here. Of course, we should pray. And I know that's, oh, every Christian, pray, pray. What does that do? I'm going to give you four specific things to pray for. Number one, keep me steadfast in the faith. The biggest thing that you can pray for when people are hostile to your beliefs, and they're going to be, they're going to be, you're going to, be, you're going to hear the word Christian nationalism coming up real soon, by the way. And there anybody who, who, who is a, loves America and happens to be a conservative Christian, you are going to be to blame for everything. So we're going to have to ask God to keep us steadfast in the faith. Lord, keep me strong in the faith. Keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. And sometimes we have to take a bigger picture of things and say, I know they may be mad at me for what we believe about this or that, but most importantly, they're mad because they don't know how important Jesus is, and I want them to know them. So, Lord, keep me steadfast in faith. Number two, keep me from harm and danger. You can pray for that, Lord, during these tumultuous times, keep me from being harmed. Number three, soften the hearts of unbelievers Soften the hearts, maybe, maybe that's even too harsh to say. Because maybe to soften their hearts to what we believe, teach, and confess. And lead them, Lord, to you. Open their hearts to know you as Savior and Lord. And that's the important thing. When we pray for one, it's so easy for us now in America. To, to separate into sides and say, well, they're terrible and we're good. No, we need to look in, in compassion upon even those who persecute us because they need to know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And they also need to know that even though we may disagree with them or their lifestyle, their choices, it doesn't mean that we hate them. Life is not binary that way. It's if I don't agree with you that I hate you. That's not how it is at all. We can hold a multitude of things. I don't agree everything with Nadine. Sorry, Nadine, I know you're watching today. Hope she didn't hear that one. Okay. But still, we have some disagreements on life and things like this, but still, we love each other. And I think that in life is like that. I think that social media has really messed us up that way. We divide ourselves into camps so much that we just stick with those people who totally agree with us and we reject those who totally don't agree with us. We need to pray for those who may not agree with us. Pray, Lord, that, Lord, open their hearts. Open my heart, too, so that I can see where they're coming from and so that I can maybe reach them more with the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Next one. Use me as a witness to the gospel. Oh, this is, think about this. As you're saying, you're a whatever. You're just a terrible person for your beliefs. And I want to be able to let them know that Jesus paid for their sins on the cross. I, and I don't want to be superior to them. I don't want to think I'm better or anything. I just want them to know that God loves them, that God offers them forgiveness and grace. What a powerful change of heart that brings to us as we deal with people who might not agree and might be angry at what we believe 
or teach and confess. So let's get into the nitty-gritty here. How do we respond? Flip the page there, young lady. Number one. Can, should we ignore and pray it goes away? That's the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod way of doing it. Seriously, we've done that forever. Well, as I just told you to pray, but we just say, well, we'll just pray and just go over here. It doesn't work. We can pray. Pray is good, but it's not going away. Not at all. It's getting worse. Number two, we can retreat and change. Now, here's the problem. And I want to address this in the gentlest ways possible, okay? Some churches, denominations, are making the choice to retreat and change, to kind of go with the flow. And I ain't going to point any of them out, but, you know, social media is pretty active on some of these things that there are churches who change what they believe about important social issues, whether it be about abortion or same-sex marriage or anything like that. And that's not, gonna, that's not a really good witness either. Because, you know, Jesus says, I, you know, I, I, I never change. I, I, you know, I am the way, the truth, and life. I mean, he's, things never change with God. He is what he is, and he, and he teaches us what he teaches us. And so changing and retreating isn't going to really work either. Number three, speaking the truth in love. That's what the Bible says. How do you speak the truth in love? Sometimes you just have to say it. Sometimes the most loving thing to do is to not go along with the flow is just be who you are and believe what you believe. But don't hate them because of their, they may be different. Pray for them. You think about all the stuff that goes on in our lives, all the things that are wrong, all the secret things that no one knows about that we deal with every single day. We're no different than the people who may disagree with us on a, on a point. Just that it's more open. So we have to be a little bit humble about this but speak the truth in love, knowing that I want them to know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and accept the consequences. And it's going to get tougher. It may mean jobs. It may mean lifestyle. But we're coming to a point in life where we can't retreat anymore. We can't just go with the flow. And I'm telling you, it's not going to just be about little issues, little individual issues. It's going to be about you as a Christian who lives in America. It's coming. It's, they've already labeled it. The Department of Homeland Defense is even talking about this right now. Christian nationalists is going to be the big issue. It is happening. Not that you're going to go to jail, but it's going to be soft opposition. You're going to be shamed in for what you believe. So sometimes you just got to, this is what I believe, and I'm going to have to accept the consequences. But this is what's really important now, right here, number four. Seek out like-minded Christians. This is where Gloria Dei, or churches who are like-minded, is going to be really important for you. To find the, and develop those relationships. Now I'm going to speak to people who are watching online. And I'm so glad that you're with us today. And I know that, you know, for various reasons you're watching. And I understand that people are gone and things like that. But if you can, find a church. If you can come here, please come here. Not just because we want more members, because we need you and you need us as a body of like-minded believers, right? Like a, that we can connect with each other, that we can find support and strength and comfort as we go through these challenging times. All right? You're going to have to accept some consequences, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's a lot better and a lot easier when we deal with it with other Christians who believe the same thing, who can support and pray and help us. Now, I want to talk about children. Next page here. I want to talk about children. Not all of you have children, 
And that's, that's, that's great. I mean, that, God has plans for all of us, whether we're single, divorced, widowed, or we have children, whatever. But I want to talk to you who have children and grandchildren and even nieces and nephews. Because kids, what, what was happening, like I said, 15 years ago when I was a campus pastor, what's happening, what happened in the, in the college is now happening in the middle school and elementary school. There's a lot of pressure to have hold certain views and certain beliefs, and to, to, they want you to go with the flow, and they try to normalize a lot of things that are kind of antithetical to the Christian faith. Here's how you need to help your children. Number one, you need to pray for and with your children. It's important that you not only pray for them by yourselves, but you pray with them. Remember, we talked to the children's message, Lord, we want to pray for those who are bullies. I want you to pray for those, your children, that same way. And if you don't know how to do it, we're here to help you. And I make this promise to you right now that I will help you, that this congregation will help you. And don't be ashamed if you don't know how to do it. It's a whole new world we're living in. We will help you and teach you how to pray for your children. We're going to have resources available that are coming out real soon, as, in fact, about how you can pray and teach your children. This is our pledge to you here at Gloria Dei, that we will help you. But teach your children to pray, to pray for those who persecute them. Number two, strengthen their faith. Teach them why this is important. Why is what we believe about Jesus and what he's done for us, why is that a big deal? And if you don't know this yourselves, then come to me and I'll help you. We'll teach you at Glory Day. I will, I promise you. I'll sit down with you privately and we'll go through these things and we'll talk about them. Don't be embarrassed because we're... For so long in America, we've never had to think about this stuff. We've never had to think about people who are opposed to us because everybody was some kind of nominal believer, right? But it isn't that way anymore. This is a whole new world we're living in. And I pledge to you that we're here to help you today. We're helped here to help you with this, to teach your children why this is important. Number three, find alternatives and build their community of like-minded believers. And this is another church thing again. You can't remove yourself from the world completely, but you need to find supportive people and families and kids who believe the same thing so that you have a place of safety that you can go to as well. Like I said, I don't encourage anybody to remove themselves from the world, um, but I do think we're at this point where we need to surround ourselves with people who can help us get through these times. I want to wrap it up with this one here. Let's flip the page. I want to talk about today is Trinity Sunday. And normally on Trinity Sunday, you get these long theological sermons about the nature of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I'm just here to tell you today that the God who created this world, He created it for you and for me. And he, even though we fell into sin, even though we rejected him, he sent his son, the son of God, part of himself, to live for us, to, be a, to become as a man, to live a perfect life and to offer up that perfect life as a perfect payment for all of our sins. Jesus died and rose again to pay for all your sins. You are forgiven God loves you, not because of some positions that you hold, or not because you're a member here, but he loves you because his son Jesus paid for every one of our sins. What a great thing it is. And I want you to know that I don't want you to leave here without knowing how much God loves and has invested his life in you. And if that's not enough, God sent his Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit to work through word, to work through baptism, to work through the Holy Communion, to point us back to Jesus. What a great God we have, and to give us those gifts that we need 
to work through this life and to give him glory and praise. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we love. I know we're going to go through some tough times as Christians, especially going forward. This summer on, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But we're here to help. We're here to support you. Come here as a community to support each other. And most of all, know that God loves you, that he forgives you, that he has a plan for you, and he will never let you go. And that's all I got for today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take our offering, and please sign that record of fellowship in your pews as well. Thank you. Forgive us. You have a plan for us. Lord, we're so thankful for all you've done. Lord, help us as we go through potentially difficult times where we need to stand for what we believe. Lord, help us to find those people and those, and those organizations that will support us in our walk with you. Lord, we lift up before you those who need your help and strength, especially for Book, Butch Hanke, who was, uh, Hanke was hospitalized, but he's here today, and we're so grateful that, Lord, that you were bringing him back to health and be with him. For Rob Bear, who is recovering from back surgery, Lord, please be with him and strengthen him as he recovers. Lord, we also pray for Rita Christensen and John Bird, who are getting married today. We're so grateful for that, uh, that joining together, and we pray your blessings upon their new life together. And Lord, we pray for a nation that doesn't always know you as Savior, Lord. We pray for those people who rejected you. And those, we pray for those who might persecute us, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would soften their hearts to hear the good news of forgiveness and life. And Lord, we especially pray for our family members who may be struggling with you. Lord, lead them back to you. Use us to reach into their lives with the good news. All these things, Lord, we bring to you, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us 
our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing our last hymn. That you all came to worship with us today. I'm sorry I gotta leave, but I have another church service doing Breezy Point in nine minutes. So, <laughs> so hey, we have snacks and we've got coffee right out in front here. Um, please enjoy that. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, just talk to one of our elders there and our pastor, uh, Pastor Johnson's here, uh, our their vacancy pastor during the wedding. He, he can, you greet. All right. He's going to do it. God, go with you.